Good morning, and welcome to Biblically Correct. We are thrilled that you're here this morning. Jean and I, as I was just sharing with the ladies, have been upstairs praying, and we are very excited. Phil, God's hand has been upon this Bible study, and as some of you heard from Marge, she was much kinder about telling how all this came about. Really, we'd been searching and searching for a Bible study to do that would help us engage our culture and to really understand the world in which we're living in relationship to how we're to live according to God's Word. And so she had bought several Bible studies and we were looking at them and there would be parts that we liked but nothing quite fit what we were looking for and so one day I went wait a minute your son Evan teaches ethics <laughs> at Southwestern Seminary is his doctorate in ethics do you think Evan would write our curriculum and she's well I don't know I, I could ask him and we are so grateful that Dr. Evan Lino agreed to write our curriculum for the fall, and I could not be more pleased. He's done a tremendous job, and I think you're going to be, um, you're going to be excited as you begin to study. You're going to get some answers from God's Word about the things that we're having to encounter in our culture and the truths of the Word of God that we want to pass on to our children and grandchildren. Yes. Jeannie and I have been talking about yes. that. Yes, yes. Um, I've been teaching the mom's ministry for the last 23 years, and I've just seen the culture change so dramatically, and our, our, our moms are so impacted about things that weren't even on the radar when my children were uh, uh, young. Uh, we didn't have the Internet. We didn't have cable TV. There weren't even VCRs, y'all. We didn't have <laughs> cell phones and when we finally got cell phones our oldest was 16 and the thing was this big nobody <laughs> wanted it nobody wanted to drag that thing around and the culture has just changed so much and we just felt like it was time we draw our women together and, and and begin to look at the impact the culture is having on the Christian home and family and and, and get our women to look into the Word of God and see what it says about how to live as light and as salt in the midst of a world that has gone absolutely mad. <laughs> This is true. Um, and as we delve into this topic, the reason we chose to sit down this week, we won't be doing that every week. Jean and I are going to team teach today. After this, we're really going to be alternating typically week from week. But we wanted you to feel like we're sitting at the table with you. Because this is really what we're hoping to accomplish as we meet each week, is that we're going to sit down as sisters in Christ, locked arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, facing what the enemy is bringing against our families and against Christianity so that we're standing strong with one another and as we were singing this morning in fact I asked them to pull back up that first screen because it said let no one caught in mm -hmm. sin remain yes. inside the lie of inward shame but fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed great love mm -hmm. ladies the good news that all of us have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not claiming to be morally superior to the culture. We are just confessing we've been forgiven. Yes, <laughs> we yes. have found the one who has the answers mm. to life, who has given us the Bible, his word, to reveal himself to us and his guidelines for living life the way it works because the creator should know how life should work best. And if you've got a handout this morning, you'll see that we asked the question, well, what is this? And I've given you a couple of quotes out of Evan's material. What is it that we're doing? What is biblically correct? It's literally a study of Christian ethics. And it can be defined as the theory and regulation of moral behavior within the context of the community of believers as they seek to reflect the nature of God in a fallen world. And that's what we each want to do, to so be grounded in the Word of God that we're accurately reflecting Jesus to a lost world. Mm -hmm. um, I want to uh, share with you, I had to take my bracelet off. I really love it when I'm getting so fired up, my jewelry just flies off. And so uh, I had to take that off. But let me just share this little illustration with you. I have been a contact wearer for many, many years since high school. I began wearing glasses at the age of uh, about uh, five or six. I, I'm terribly, terribly nearsighted. Well, my prescription over many, many years did not change, so I continued to wear the same pair of hard contacts for many years. In fact, they were 22 years old before I actually replaced them. Now, I realize some of you are not even 22 years old out there in the audience. I, I get that, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because my prescription did not change. But one time, years ago, I began to realize that I was starting to see things very blurry. In fact, I was beginning to have some double vision. So I called my eye doctor and I, I went in to see him and I explained to him that I'd never had this 
problem. I'd wore contacts for years and years and years. Now, all of a sudden, I was seeing double. And I said, I'm afraid there's something dreadfully wrong with my eyes. So he said, well, let me take a look and examine my eyes. And he took my contacts out and examined my eyes, examined my contacts. And he said, I know what the problem is. And I remember just bracing myself. And I said, go ahead, Doc, what is it? And he said, your lenses are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have them polished. The only problem is you're looking through a dirty lens, beloved. As Christians, we must look through the lens of God's Word, allow the Spirit of God to enable us to impart His truth to us so that we can see clearly. If not, beloved, we are in danger as believers of beginning to live through the dirty lens of our culture. And there's so many in our culture that are spinning things to such a degree that if you do not know, thus saith the Lord, it is easy to start saying, well, pardon me, I dropped, knocked the table. It's easy to start saying, well, that is reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that does make sense. Well, I can see that. We've got to have the clean lens of the Word of God with the Spirit of God. Or, beloved, we as Christian women are going to begin to live like those outside the faith. Anybody hallelujah in the house? Yeah. <laughs> All right, come on, come on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what this lesson is about. Uh, this study, rather, is about that we might begin to look through the filter of the Word of God so that we know how then we are to live. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful picture. Um, why are we doing that? I think Jean has just given us the answer in her illustration. We're doing it so that we are looking accurately through the lens of Scripture so that we see life as God sees it. We ask God to give us His eyes so that we can see as He sees, ears to hear what He is saying so that we can be instantly obedient to what He's called us to do. Um, we desire to let the world, we desire to see the world as God sees it, literally. And you've got three points here that Evan pointed out in our curriculum that you'll be looking at this next week, that our lives are a witness to the world. We are to literally be a witness to the world. And you've got your Bibles. Open to Matthew 5, verse 16. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So the first point is we are a witness to the world and we are to live in such a way that we are literally lights of the gospel and that the lost are drawn to that light. And if you look at the second one, we're to be prepared to give an answer for our faith. Turn to 1 Peter 3.15. It says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Now we want to be prepared to be ready to give an answer, defense for the faith, why we believe what we believe. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I already know what I believe on these things. I think you may be surprised. As we get in and dig in the Word each week, you're going to see some things that maybe you have not seen before. You're going to be maybe a little alarmed that you have been as impacted by the thinking of the world as you have been. And we'll see this as we get into the Word, and then we can know why our hope is fixed on Jesus Christ, why we believe what we believe, and we can do it in a winsome way. Yeah. We can speak the truth, but we do it in love because ultimately we're desiring to draw people over to the truth of God's Word. And Jean, I'll let you take number three for us. Um, I, I was uh, hearing now, Don, I'm going to let you go ahead and read number three because I hate to admit it, I don't have that hand up. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> we're not to be conformed to the world, and that's Romans 12, 2. And many of you have memorized 1 and 2. Um, Romans 2 tells us we're not to be conformed to this world, but to be what? Transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of our mind. So as we get into the Word of God, we're going to allow the Word of God to literally renew our mind, to change the way we think so that we are thinking sanely. Mm -hmm. And the only way to think sanely is to think biblically. Yeah. So we're digging into the Word of God so that we are thinking accurately mm -hmm. as God thinks. The mind must be renewed before the behavior can be transformed. Beloved, you need to understand that at the moment of conversion, when you received Christ on His terms of repentance and faith, at that moment you were placed into the body of Christ, into the kingdom of God, into the family of God. Your destiny was changed. Your destination was changed. The Spirit of God came to live within you. Hallelujah. But you also need to understand that your mind was not instantly renewed. 
you brought into your Christian experience a mind that had been trained in depravity. Mm -hmm. And until the mind is renewed, again, the Word of God and the Spirit of God, until we have been washed with the water of the Word, beloved, our mind, even as a believer, continues to resort back to old thought patterns. And because of that, if we are not careful to diligently renew the mind, what happens is we begin to rely on our own common sense. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. That's written to believers. And the way that is accomplished is by the renewing of the mind. We have to be so careful because the enemy is so subtle and he knows how to lob his lies into our mind. And if we don't have the helmet of our salvation in place, then he is able to cause us to begin to buy into his lies and his deceptions. Several years ago, I began to have a, a good amount of pain on the sole of my foot. And I finally called a doctor. I had never gone to see a podiatrist, but I called to say, I'm having something's wrong with my foot. And so I went in to see him, and I showed him this heavy callus place in the center of my foot. It was extremely painful. And I asked him, what is it? And he said, it's a wart. And I said, are you kidding me? And he said, it's a planter's wart. They're very common. And I said, well, that doesn't sound very feminine. I'd like something else. <laughs> I don't want a wart. And I said, furthermore, how did I get a wart? Does this have anything to do with frogs? And he said it did not. <laughs> now, I assured him that I never walk barefooted. And so I said, and I'll tell you, it's because when I was the age of 10, I walked outside barefooted and I stepped on a frog. And ever since that time, I never go anywhere without shoes on. So I said, I've never been out and about barefooted. How could I possibly have a wart of all things? I was very offended by that. How could I possibly have a wart on my foot? And he said, well, you have walked somewhere where someone who also had a planter's wart has walked and you picked up the virus. And I said, I just don't get that because I always wear shoes. And he said, look, here's the deal. When you walk about the world, the world contaminates you. I rocked back on my heels and said, well, that's the most spiritual thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Y'all, it's true. When you and I who know Christ, as we walk about our day, the world, the flesh, the enemy is trying to cling to us. And if we are not careful, having our mind renewed, not being transformed, not being conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of the mind. If we are not careful, beloved, what happens is, well, I hate to say it, but we get wars. Because the world, the flesh, and the devil wants to contaminate us that we not think according to God's biblical truth. Okay, true. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> I Excellent. like affirmation. Okay, what are some recent examples that we've just been seeing in our culture? Um, some of you are probably baseball fans. You know a little bit about what's been going on with Alex Rodriguez, or A-Rod, as he's more uh, affectionately known, and his performance-enhancing drug use. We know the guy that's been uh, you know, arrested, supposedly has sold drugs to him. This has happened to him before. He is at risk of being suspended for, I think, 211 games. But you know what was most interesting to me? I actually watched an interview of him uh, on ESPN, and he was asked, how are you dealing with this? And he said, well, the support of my teammates and my faith in God. Now listen to what Wallace Matthews, the reporter with ESPN, wrote. He said, we already know that A-Rod has been a liar, an adulterer, and more than likely a serial performance-enhancing drug cheat. And no matter what baseball has on him and its thousands of pages of documentary evidence, it is highly unlikely it has anything that could damage his reputation more than it has already been damaged. We already know Alex Rodriguez is guilty of something. He hasn't even bothered to deny his PED use. His sole focus seems to be the reduction of the unprecedented 211-game suspension, which for a player of his age and physical condition is the same as the death penalty for his career. So he's not denying that he's done something wrong. He is upset about the penalty of his wrongdoing. And is that not 
the natural response of our flesh. We sometimes are not as upset that we've been caught doing something wrong as we are with what happens, the consequences of being caught in sin. And even as Steve was preaching Sunday, Gene and I were talking about how when we look at the Word of God, it literally is our foundation. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us that Jesus Christ is the foundation upon which we build. When you got saved, Jesus Christ became the rock, your foundation. And now you get to choose what you build upon that foundation. And we want to choose wisely, to choose to invest and to build with those things that are eternal, that are gold, silver, and precious stones. And as we look at Christ as that foundation, I think it was, I told her I've read so many people's definitions of a biblical worldview. But I think it was John MacArthur that came up with these two points that just stuck in my mind. That the Bible is to be our foundation and our final authority. Yeah. And it was like as I was thinking about it and praying about it, as Christ is that foundation, we are to build upon that foundation with those things that are biblical, that honor Christ, that bring praise and glory to his name. And when we come up with or against something in our culture or even our own life, something we're faced with, the final authority has to be God's word. And when we dig into his word and we see what God says in black and white, then we have to understand God is good, mm. and he's a rewarder of those who seek him. Yeah. So if we choose to do the hard thing, and sometimes it's a very hard thing <laughs> to choose obedience, to die to the flesh, but when we choose to make God our final authority, we will find the blessing truly is on the other yeah. side of that obedience, yeah. that God desires to bless us. And as we've studied the word of God, and many of you have been reading through God's word chronologically or just from Genesis to Revelation every year, you have seen over and over the goodness of God, yeah. that his desire always is for mercy to triumph over judgment. What about Miley Cyrus? What do we see from that? A young woman who claims, some people say, to have been a Christian, mm -hmm. and yet we have seen in young woman after young woman particularly that start out very young how they can be corrupted by the world and they become a seductive female entertainer. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? It's the lure of the evil one whose end game is what, ladies? Destruction. Mm -hmm. His goal is destruction. His goal is destruction for you. For your marriage, for your children, for your grandchildren, for the family, the institution yeah. of the family, because God originated the family. Mm -hmm. And because we are created in his image, he comes after us. So you have to understand when we look at these things, it is not so that we can be morally superior. Mm -hmm. It is so we can look at them and understand, but by the grace of God, there I yes, go. Yes. If it were not for the grace of God, that could be me. Mm -hmm. That could be my child. Yeah. And we want to line up with the truth of God's word and to understand in humility what Jesus Christ has done for us through the gospel. We are not, many times, morally superior than the world, but we are forgiven. Yes. We yes. are under grace. Mm. And as we accept and rejoice in that forgiveness, it creates within us a desire to be holy. Yes. We are commanded mm. to be holy, but it comes out of that desire of love and gratitude because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. The more we understand from the Word of God and by the Spirit of God what Christ has done indeed for us, Oh, beloved, it becomes so reasonable for us to love him and to strive for personal holiness and practical righteousness for our own lives, not to lord it over others, but that we begin to live a life that honors him. My husband and I live way out in Fayette County. I'm telling you, we live out so far, they won't deliver pizza to us. <laughs> um, that's how far out we live. And uh, I drive in and out on Macon Road. And one time years ago, I was driving in Macon Road, coming into the church to teach Bible study. And uh, as I came along, uh, here were all of these fire trucks uh, all around this one area, very rural area, but there was a house there, and it was consumed in flames. Now, it turns out that this was a planned uh, fire so that they could train the new fire recruits, firemen recruits, um, and it was honestly a rather stirring to watch these firemen and women all in their yellow slickers, all with their gear, they're standing shoulder to shoulder around this house watching it burn till it got to a certain point and I've got to tell you I was just so impacted I slowed down and just watched those men and women ready to go in and fight this blaze when they were given uh, the signal by their commanders it was rather stirring sight and um, uh, you see ever since I've had little bitty uh, children every time we would see policemen or firemen or hear an ambulance or see an ambulance or or hear a siren we would always pray dear Jesus keep our firemen 
then say thank you they protect our city we taught the children that from very very little and it still impacts me today well as I drove on to Bible study I still just had that on my mind that house just completely engulfed in flames when I drove back the fire had been put out and I, I, I honestly I had to just pull in there and just stand there and ponder what I saw the only thing that remained from that burning was the foundation the only thing that was left was the concrete foundation and I just stood there and meditated on that truth that Christ is our foundation no other foundation can be laid but that which is Christ Jesus having said that God allows you and I and it's just almost scandalous to think the liberty he gives us because we can destroy his name and sometimes bring such disgrace to him uh, I know who I am I wasn't saved till I was 24 years old and I just can't believe God's ever let me speak ever about him to anyone I feel like I'm the one he should have said now you're saved but please don't tell anyone that's that's how I feel like I am <laughs> but I stood there smelling the smoke and standing in the puddles looking at that house the foundation stood but all that had been built on it was wood hay and stubble and in an instant it had been wiped out and I stood there awestruck by that visual image and just prayed God oh God let me have a house built upon the sure foundation of Christ with gold and silver and precious stone. I don't want to play games. I don't want to play church. I don't want to get engaged in religious activity. I don't want to be guilty of religious ritual and routine. I want a life that counts for Jesus Christ. Having laid that foundation, he has laid that in my life. I want a life built upon that that can stand up against the test of time so that when the storms come right. and they are coming right. and when the wind blows and it will when change comes that I don't like when life falls apart and it will I want a life that stands on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ don't you beloved amen. don't you amen? amen amen listen to me the only way that will happen is when you and I know the word of God and understand as Donna said it is the final the absolute final word amen. is God's holy word we cannot afford to let the talking heads and the liberal community and the liberal media twist things and spin things until we God's chosen people are deceived and confused we've got to keep going back to the word and back to the word and listen when God says this is my word the word became flesh and dwelt among us oh that we would know the fullness of Christ through his word and by his spirit amen so open your Bibles to first Peter 1 and we're going to camp out for a few moments in verses 13 through 25 as we were praying about what to share this morning and studying I just came to this and talked to Jean and we both felt drawn to this passage it's almost like it just walks right through exactly what we're doing as though Peter were writing to us specifically for our time together today look at verses 13 through 25 in first Peter chapter 1 therefore prepare your minds for action Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. If you address as Father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear, reverence, during the time of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. 
For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which was preached to you. So as we look at this passage of scripture, and I mean it just jumped off the page at me, and I saw immediately, what is he telling us to do? Prepare your minds for action. We are to prepare our minds. We must know what the word of God says so that we know what we are to believe. And ladies, we know what we believe by what we do. We can confess that we believe something, but there may be a situation that comes up in life or we're forced with a decision to make about something and we make something contrary to the word of God because in the moment we cave in. We don't want to do that. We want that firm foundation of God's truth knowing, once again, he is not only our foundation, he's our final authority. So this is what God says. And in Colossians 2.8, um, Paul said, don't let anyone capture you with empty mm. philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. That's exactly what Gene was saying. It can be a talking head. It can be a, a liberal news anchor. It can be your next-door neighbor. It can be a close friend who's not thinking according to the truth of God's Word. So that's why we're going to be digging into God's Word so we know what he says about these issues. And then we're equipped to be able to not only line our lives up with this truth, but then also to come alongside others and be winsome in drawing them to the truth of God's word so that they too can experience the blessing of his presence and his provision mm -hmm. in their lives as well. Do you want to continue? Go, to oh, yeah, yeah. go ahead. How okay. do you want to do it? Oh, okay. I, I want to um, draw your attention to the fact that we are called not to a passive yeah. Christian experience, but we are called to warfare. He yeah. says, gird up your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. Prepare your minds is what New American says, uh, New American Standard says. Uh, it's action. It's activity. Right. Because you and I came to Christ by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah for it. He did for us what we could not do ourselves, hallelujah for that. Most of us then think that this part of our Christian life called sanctification, which begins at the moment of our conversion and continues on into the moment of our glorification when we see Christ face to face, either through the rapture of the church or through the portal of death, most of us think he does that part for us as well. And beloved, that's simply not biblical. He calls us to educate, to study, to intentionally engage in the Word of God so that we're able to engage the culture. He calls us to war. And so often believers think we have been called to a cruise ship and beloved, we've been called to a battleship. That's right. That's right. Gird up your mind. Get your mind together. Gather all of those trillions of things, moms, that are pulling at you, all those schedules, all those things that must be done, and indeed they must be done, or... You know, some of them not. I, I'm just going to tell you that you don't have to vacuum every day. Uh, you can vacuum, you know, once a, once a month. You can ask your little children to pick up the big stuff. And, and, and there, there are ways to get around this. There really are. Uh, but the point is, beloved, invest your time, your energy, your effort, your passion, your heart in gearing up. Put on the whole armor of God and be ready to engage in the warfare that is going on that we might go up against the spirit of darkness and reclaim what the enemy has taken from us. Praying on others' behalf that they would see the truth and come to understand the truth. It's about a battle, beloved. And it's one that we cannot take a vacation from. It's a lot like motherhood. <laughs> Yes, that is true. <laughs> it really is because we are to be ready. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, or excuse me, uh, chapter 4, verse 2, we're to be ready in season and out of season. When you feel like it and when you don't. Right. When you've got a migraine and when you don't. When a baby's kept you up and when you've gotten a good night's rest. When someone's teething and colicky or not. When you get a phone call from uh, someone who needs your help or not, it says be ready whether you feel like it or not. We are called to gird up our minds, to have our minds mentally sharp and prepared 
trained by the Word of God, enabled and empowered by the Spirit of God, so that we're ready to say yes, Lord, and obey Him whenever and whatever He calls us to do. Go ahead, Don. Exactly right. And we're to be sober in spirit. And that's our inner mm. man. So you've got your mind, you've got your spirit man, and your inner being. We're to be sober. That literally means that we're to uh, have our inner man focused on its object, and that object is Christ. Yes. It's the hope that we have because we're in Christ Jesus. It literally means to be vigilant against all your spiritual dangers and enemies and be temperate and modest so we are to be prepared have our minds ready for action we are ready to obey immediately whenever the lord calls us and speaks to us and we're to be sober in our spirit alert to what god is doing sensitive to his voice and as he speaks to us to respond immediately in obedience you know i was talking many of you know that our daughter and son-in-law lindsay and ryan wingo are going to be moving to apex north carolina and it's it's exciting and it's sad at the same time because I'm the mother and the grandmother and Ivy and Ruthie are so accustomed to coming to our home and Ivy particularly thinks everything in our home belongs to her and she was so cute the other day she opened the pantry and walked in and went oh, look Nana we have goldfish <laughs> she I mean look this is my table and this is my room and these are my toys and and I love that I love that my grandchildren feel right at home in our home ladies I know some of you are going to come to this study thinking but I don't know that I can do this. I don't know that I have the brain power to study. I don't know that I have the time to study. I can tell you, you can do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. When I had four small children and I was having to get up in the morning before everybody else did, and you know what, sometimes they wake up and you have to give them something to drink and lay them down on the couch and say, Mommy's not finished yet. Because I could not be the woman, the wife, the mother God has called me to be until I've had my time with the Lord. Yeah. And so that is how I was preparing my mind for action, for the action of the day, what God was calling me to do. And do you understand that Jesus Christ Christ has given us everything we need in the Father. You can walk into God's pantry and say, look, Lord, we have whatever it is you need for that day. It is yours in Christ Jesus. You have received every spiritual blessing in Christ. You are now seated with him in heavenly places, and the enemy is under your feet. So do not listen to the accuser. Do not listen to the father of lies who is telling you that you cannot, you can because you have Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, Craig and I have been blessed to raise two little guys up into grown men. Uh, Jason's our oldest and Dawes is our second child. And uh, uh, we had so much fun raising up those guys. But they're both married now and have uh, families of their own. They're building their own households of faith. What a, a great honor. The scripture says, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in truth. And that is such a blessing. I know Donna would echo that as well. And uh, when Jason first married uh, Sweet Patty, uh, and you've just got to understand, we had had all men at my house, Craig and both of the boys, very testosterone-driven household. Uh, sports were always on, pizza was always in the oven, just very male-dominated household. Then we got these darling little girls. We called them our, our, our bonus babies because we didn't birth them, we didn't raise them. We just had these darling girls show up in our lives because of our men and uh, because of our boys marrying them. But I uh, Jason married Sweet Patty, and she called me one day. At that time, I did a lot of scrapbooking. I don't anymore. I really don't have the time, but I, and what I do is done digitally. But she called and said, I'm going to make some invitations, and I want to know, could I have some of your scrapbook paper? And I said, oh, darling, you come get anything you want. You're, you're just welcome to anything I have. You just come, and I will uh, confess, I tend to collect whatever I love. And <laughs> so I had plenty. And so she came, and I took her up to that little area where I worked, and, and I was showing her. I said, just help yourself, just fanning through paper. And, and, and she stirred around there and kind of messed around. And they hadn't been very, very long. She was still calling me Miss Stockdale. I told her she could call me Jane, but she said she just didn't know when that was going to happen. But it eventually <laughs> did. But anyway, she was kind of pilfering through. And she finally would pull out one sheet and say, well, I, I think I would like this sheet. And I said, oh, honey you need more than one sheet help yourself have all you want she said oh okay maybe two I'll take take me two little sheets then and I said that's not gonna be enough take all you want let me give you some more and she said oh uh, Miss Stockdale I, I don't want to take all your scrapbook paper and I looked at her and I said baby girl I've given you my son <laughs> that's right. you think I'm gonna start drawing the line in scrapbook paper <laughs> You think that's what I'm not going to give you after I've given you my son? What God is saying to us, beloved, is he who has not withheld his own right. darling, only begotten son. How much more does he have planned for them who walk uprightly by faith? 
Oh, beloved, we're limiting God's work in our lives when he's saying, I've given you my right. son for heaven's sakes. Mm -hmm. I want you to live in my fullness. I want you to understand that I, I, I gave you my son. Now enter into all that is yours. Not just in heaven when we die. That right. will be glorious. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it. But beloved, it's right here and right now. Do you understand if his only purpose was to get us out of hell and into heaven, if that's all this thing was about, beloved, he would have taken us home at the moment of conversion. He's left us behind because there's so much he wants to do in and through us. Again, I find it stunning that God would allow any of us, but especially me, to be engaged in kingdom work. But that's what he is doing. He is calling us, beloved, to gird up our minds, to be sober in spirit, to get busy about this thing, to grow up as obedient children into the fullness of Christ that he might use us in whatever our sphere of influence is. And the next phrase says, fixing your hope completely. And I love that because to me, hope says emotions. Um, if I'm hopeful, you know what? Things are good. But things shouldn't just be good when life is good. Things are good because we're in Christ. And so we fix that hope completely on the grace that we have because we are in Christ Jesus. And as we fix our hope, our emotions are fixed. And I want you to understand as we work through some of these issues, there are going to be some things that surface that could be in your past, a relative's past, a child's past, or maybe they're present. And I want you to understand the one who brings guilt and shame is the evil one. That's right. Jesus Christ came to give forgiveness. And if you are in Christ Jesus, it does not matter what's in your past. Romans 8.1 tells us the hallelujah verse after Paul's honest struggle between the spirit and the flesh in Romans chapter 7 is that there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So when the evil one comes to you with condemnation and accusation, you have to understand that's his voice. That is Amen. not the voice of your Savior. Yes. The voice of your Savior will come to you in conviction if you are currently living in sin that he is pointing out to you because his great love for you does not want you to self-destruct mm -hmm. his great love for you wants to draw you back into the safety of his will where he is able to protect you where he will protect you where he's promised to protect you and it doesn't mean that life is going to be pain-free and trouble-free within that will but it does mean it can be stress Free. And that affects your emotions, ladies, mm. because he has told us to not worry about anything. Do not wor worry about nothing, Philippians 4, 6. But instead, take those worries, those anxieties, and you roll them over onto him through prayer. And when you do that, then his peace will literally build a fortress mm. around your heart and your mind mm. so that you can rise above those things that stress you because you are in Christ and you are now seated in the heavenly places in him. And your emotions can be rock solid. doesn't mean you're never going to hurt. It doesn't mean that you might not cry. For instance, when Lindsay and I were preparing their house to get it online and they were going to come take pictures to put it up, you know, for the realtor to do, and neither one of us could really talk about it because we both would get teary-eyed. We'd both start crying. And so we'd just get busy. <laughs> you just find something else to clean, something else to clean out, right? And um, because I know... I know what is true. I know in my head what is true. And because we'd been praying with them and walking with them through this decision, I knew some of the things God had been speaking to her about. And so I was coming alongside in agreement and praying. Now, had my, have my emotions caught up with what I know? Not yet, but they will. Mm -mm. They will. Mm -mm. And that's the truth. If I allow myself to be ruled by my emotions, it can affect my thinking. Mm -hmm. But if I choose to think what I know is true mm -hmm. and I act on that truth, eventually my emotions will line up. Mm. That's why it is so important that we fix our hope. Yes, yes. Uh, ladies, as Donna and I have spent the summer uh, in, interacting about this uh, incredible uh, material that we're going to be studying, one of the things we have been very concerned about is the opening and the opportunity of the enemy to come against you as you're studying and reading uh, this Bible study. And I want you to hear, uh, Don has already said, and I want you to hear from me as well, we're not about condemnation. We don't want you to um, 
draw back from some of the hard things of this study because you are still dealing with shame or guilt. We are praying against those things. Beloved, there is freedom in Christ no matter what has happened in your past by choices you have made or what someone perhaps has done to you. There is freedom in Christ. Right. As Donna said, it does not erase the pain. But it allows that pain, that suffering, in context of who we are in Christ Jesus to be placed under the blood and gives us the ability to walk in freedom. But please know that we want you to, uh, if you have any sense of condemnation, immediately take that before the Lord. When God brings conviction, he is very specific. You should not have said that. That was offensive. That thing you said, that was unkind. He brings conviction about very specific things. When the enemy speaks, beloved, he always speaks in first person and he uses our voice. Don't you know that if he spoke to us in a gravelly, scary voice, we'd be able to identify him? It's the fact that when he speaks to us and we hear him, this is what he says. You are the worst mother in the whole world. If that group down at Bellevue ever found out who you really are, they'd never let you participate in anything because you're the worst mother. And don't even get me started about what you're like as a wife. You're dreadful. You're terrible. You're never going to get any better. That's the voice of the enemy. That's right. And it sounds like my own voice so if I'm not careful, I start to think, yeah, I'm pretty bad. I really am. I am a wretched mother. And uh, beloved, learn to distinguish the condemnation of the enemy that's very general and very cruel and is not redemptive in nature right. as opposed to the voice of our father who says, child, come here, come here, come here. I want to whisper in your ear. I want to speak to you with the purpose of redeeming us and restoring right. us, bringing us to repentance and confession and restoration. So I, I want to encourage you to stay faithful in your Bible study, to stay in the Word of God, to ask the Spirit of God to enlighten your eyes that you might see truth as you've never seen before. We study God's Word, not that we might become academically uh, wise, but that we might become spiritually engaged. We fix our hope upon Jesus Christ for the purpose and the intention of walking in obedience to what he reveals to us. Donna, That's you right. want to bring us to a conclusion? Excellent. And we're to be then, all this will lead us to being obedient in our actions. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you get your mind right and your spirit man is resolute and your emotions are fixed on the hope that we have because we're in Christ Jesus, then you're going to be obedient in your actions. And I have to tell you, there were a few verses that just jumped out at me when it said here that we are conduct ourselves um, in fact, let me find it here. It's, uh, look at verse 17. If you address his father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth. Now, we understand this is not our home. And yeah. I looked up just a few verses that talk about us walking in a, a reverential fear of the Lord, literally trembling at his word. And as we come to his word, that's how we should respond to it, in humility and a desire to be obedient. Psalm 4.4 4 says, tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Tremble before him, before his truth. Psalm 99.1 says, the Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Isaiah 66, 2 says, For my hand made all these things. He's the creator. Thus all these things came into being, declares the Lord. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. Mm. That is our desire as we accurately reflect mm. Jesus Christ. Yes. To be humble, contrite of spirit, to tremble at his word, to mm. so desire to obey him. Because this is just to stay on earth. Mm. I was in a prayer time with a group of women and my sister was actually praying several of us were praying and she was praying and um, many of you know Scott and Liz Fleming and that Liz Fleming has gone home to be with Jesus and 
She's a relatively young woman. I think we're close to the same age. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord has taken her home, and Julie was just being very honest and transparent as she was praying, and she said, Lord, you know, I feel almost like a two-year-old having a tantrum. I'm just, I'm, if I'm honest, I'm just upset that you've taken her. I don't understand why you couldn't have left her here for her family, and she's such an impact for your kingdom, and she was being so honest. And the Lord took my heart and my mind to this verse, mm. that it's a stay on earth. Mm. And it's like I saw the Lord lifting my roots up, Every time I try to put my roots down, it's like the Lord just pulls them back up. Whether it's the death of someone that's beloved in the kingdom of God, when we know for them it's glory. It's those who are left behind who are hurting in the midst of the separation. Or if it's just a temporal separation with children and grandchildren moving 12 hours away, that can be painful. But what does that do? It sh I want to have a kingdom perspective. I'm not going to say, no, they can't move. They've all got to stay right here by me. We're believers. Mm. We, we belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. He chooses us and he places us in his body as he wills. And it's for the advancement of his kingdom yes. because one day, ladies, yes. it's all going to make sense. Hallelujah. It's Hallelujah. all going to come together. Mm. And we want to encourage you, don't put down roots here. We're not building a kingdom on this broken mm. planet, thank mm. goodness. Our home is with him. Yes. And last Thursday morning, as I was preparing for discipleship group, I was praying, and I just had a moment with the Lord. You know, I was just, I was so full, my heart was so full, I was so excited, and I was just praising Him for who He is, and I got to the part that He is the way, the truth, and the life, and these words just came out. It was like, Lord, you're the way home. Mm. You're the truth to mm. live by. Yeah. You are life, full of joy, abundant, full of wonder. God, you are it, and He's given it all to us right here. Yes. So that we can be obedient, so that we can live lives that accurately reflect him, so that a lost world can see Jesus in us. And in the midst of everything going crazy, from a recession, finances, immorality, the, the assault against the family. I mean, the world is looking at us as believers and going, are you going to panic like everybody else? Mm. Are you going to have a bad attitude like everybody else? Are you going to bemoan the fact that you're struggling financially? Are you going to be full of joy? Full of wonder, mm. full of awe, because the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills is my Father. Amen. And Amen. He is my source, not yes. just a resource. Yes. He is the one who will provide up all my needs. He is the one who's going mm. before me. He is the one who is ordering my steps. Mm. He is my shield and my rear guard. Therefore, I am solid. I will not easily stumble because my foundation is mm. Jesus Christ. Mm. And ladies, that's what the world is looking for. Mm. They're looking for those who aren't acting like everybody else. Mm. For those who are not panicked, but who have a peace that passes all comprehension. Mm. And when they see that in our lives, they are drawn mm -hmm. to Christ mm -hmm. in us. And that's who it is. It's not us. It is not us. And I can honestly tell you, and I, I many times pray this when I'm teaching you guys or I'm just speaking to a group of women. I confess before you and before the Lord, I have nothing to offer you. Mm. <laughs> nothing in and of myself. I have nothing of redeeming value mm. to offer to you apart from Christ. Yes. But in Christ, I have everything. Mm. Not only everything I need, but everything you need and everything the world is searching mm. for. Yeah. It's in Christ. Yeah. He is the answer to mm. every question. Mm. And everything we need for life and godliness is contained right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what we're asking him to reveal to us this mm. semester. Mm. Amen. 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 All God's people said, Amen. come on with it. Come on. Come on. Okay. On your, thank you, Lord. On your Amen. handout are some Amen. websites. And I want you to use these. You'll notice also at the end of some of the chapters that Evan has included some additional resources, things you can read if you're wanting to read some additional things about biblical worldview, about Christian ethics, things that you would just like to be a little more articulate about utilize these free resources they're awesome all of these websites are excellent so that we can develop that scripture-based view of life and remember too that you can submit questions each week if you're thinking it somebody else is too mm -hmm. <laughs> don't think well you know that's a stupid question or nobody else would want no if you're thinking it somebody else is wondering that as well yeah. utilize that in fact we're actually hoping that we'll get to skype evan in one Tuesday and be able to ask him some of these questions and get some answers from him as well. But also you small group leaders, and they've already been talked to about this, if there's a woman in your small group who's really struggling and needs a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time to work through an issue, just have somebody to pray with through them, our biblical guidance office is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. We have some incredibly godly women in there who would be honored yes. to be able to pray with you and walk through this so that you can find healing and wholeness mm -hmm. in whatever it is the enemy is throwing up yes. at you as we yes. work through this study. Amen. Amen. Would you close us in prayer? I will. I will. Uh, ladies, Donna and I love you. The Lord loves you. This church loves you. We... 
we just bless you in the name of Jesus. He is so faithful and he is so true. Let's go to him in prayer. Oh God, oh God, our only hope, our refuge in the midst of a terrible storm. Oh, Father, you are so faithful and true. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you that you have redeemed us from the miry pit of sin and you have restored us to a holy God, reconciled us that we might call out Daddy God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. How grateful we are for your indwelling in our lives. You enable us. You restore us. You encourage us. You come alongside us and live within us that we might be able to walk according to the high calling of Jesus Christ. We're so thankful today, thankful for a church that loves the Lord Jesus Christ and upholds and loves the word of truth. Father, your word is truth. Yes. Lord, help us to learn how to rightly divide that truth that we might study to show ourselves as a worthy workman who is able to take the word in and give the word out who is desiring to take the word in with the purpose and intention of living according to it. Father, we bless you and we praise you today. Lord, I pray again against any condemnation yes, by the wicked yes. one. Lord, I know that he cannot wait to pounce upon all of us for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Lord, I'm just asking that you would help us to put on the full armor of God and able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. He is a liar. He is a father of lies. He is a murderer, has been from the beginning. And Lord, you have come that we might have abundant Hallelujah. life, that we might live in the fullness of Jesus Christ. So we stand against condemnation. There is now no condemnation Thank you, to them which are in Christ Jesus. You have come not only to set us free from our sin, but from our guilt and shame. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Lord, I pray for every one of my sweet uh, ladies who are here today. Donna and I love these precious women. We have already given our heart to them, although many we do not know personally. Because we are believing, Father, that you want to do something in and through this Bible study and in and through this group of women who are gathered here together that will stun yes, Lord. the kingdom yes. of darkness That's right. that will shut the mouths of the naysayers that will be the seed of revival mm. in our land. Mm. Lord, restore us, revive us, call us back unto yourself that we might be found faithful to the very end. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to gird up our minds, to uh, fix our minds upon Christ Jesus. We thank you that you have called us to set our hope upon the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as obedient children to grow up in Jesus, Lord, Please forgive us from the ways we're so casual about holy things. Yes, and Father. cause us yes. to burn with passion and to plead for revival. Yes, Lord. That we might yes. see you do something on such a grand mm. scale that all will be stunned yes. into silence at a fresh move of yes, God Father. that we believe may be on the threshold of falling. Mm. Lord, we want to mm. be a part of that. Yes. Now, Lord, as we dismiss, I pray for every one of these precious women that you will uphold them with your mighty hand, that you will cause your face to shine upon them, that you would allow them to walk worthy of their high calling in Jesus Christ, that you would encourage them to walk circumspectly for the days are evil, that you would bless them as they set their mind on the things above and not on the things of the earth, that they would think on these things, that the peace of God would guard their heart and mind. In yes. Christ Jesus, though we don't deserve your glory mm. and your kindness, you have seen fit to shower it upon us. May we walk in grace and peace this week in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. Let's give God a hand. Wow.